We have a Fed meeting coming out tomorrow, and along with that comes a new summary of economic projections, and we need to talk about it. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education, and do you know why you need to respect a wreath made out of $100 bills? It's because it's a wreath of Franklin's. This Fed meeting coming up is a big one. It's the last one for the year, and that summary of economic projections tells us a lot more about that higher for longer, among other things. We'll get into the intimate details of it when I pull that up, and we'll also bring CPI into it since we got those results today. I'll tell you in this video later on how you can see I'm playing this market through the Patreon and my options course and about Moomoo. In the meantime, I do want to get right over into the CPI, and like I said, we're going to transition that over into the Fed meeting and the summary of economic projections that goes along with it. So we're pretty sure that we have a pause coming up for us coming from the Fed. And let's get to the supporting information that we have and give a little bit of commentary surrounding it. What exactly the CPI did for us. And I'm going to put this up here for you. This is trading economics. And what you're looking at is CPI. And what you can see, the core inflation rate 0.3% month over month, year over year, 4%. But we were at 4% last month. And honestly, when you look at the charts, it is just a little tiny bit lower. So there's the 4% that we had. And we we're at 4% before. You can see it a little bit even. We're actually off by three hundredths of a percent difference. Almost actually, it was more like 2.3, 2.4-ish of uh, hundredths of a percent difference or thousands of a percent when we looked at but holy cow, whatever it is, it's so it's so insignificant, like it's not even really worth talking about. We might as well just call it even when we look at that one. And that would have been like a 3.9 would have been a world different, a world better than a four. Not as bad as a 4.1 to see it watching going back the other way with the Fed meeting being the very next day. We have PPI tomorrow, by the way, the producer price index. That one for us should be a pretty good as well. Now, some other things that we had, we were even last month on a month over month basis for all items, 0.1% today. So still pretty darn close to that. And we look year over year from 3.2 down to 3.1 headline. And so that's good for us. We have a dip in energy prices, which allows that to happen. What caused us to see the core inflation numbers be up so high? We still have services being the thing that's still propping that up, that's still running a little bit hot on us. And the Fed is probably going to refer to that tomorrow. I think that we're going to hear about it when Jerome Powell comes out and speaks. And so that is something I think is a little bit of a snag for us. Like I said, for on a core basis, 3.9 would have been a world better than 4. And I thought that we were going to get there and we just didn't get there this time. So we're going to have to keep an eye out for the Fed and what they have to say. Like I said, Right now, we're looking at a near certainty for a pause tomorrow. And what we actually see as a result of the economic reports that we've gotten recently is we actually see a little bit more volatility, a little bit more uh, spreading out, if you will, of what exactly can happen with that federal funds rate when you look at the bond market for that one. So let's move over from there. I want to get over to the summary of economic projections itself. So the SEP is what we'll call it for short because the summary of economic projections is a mouthful to say every time. Real GDP. So for end of 2023, they were talking about 2.1% being that number, we actually are currently without the fourth quarter GP, uh, GDP in there, we're currently sitting at like 2.3 already. So we would actually have to have a negative GDP in the fourth quarter in order to, for this to, to still hold true. Now, mind you, they're going to be aware of that. It'll be interesting to see how they adjust that one because it might give some flavor to how they think the fourth quarter for GDP is shaping up and if we still expect a strong consumer to come out of that. So well above a 2.3 is actually going to be very good for us. And like I said, 2.3 is where we're currently at. For so from the end of Q3, from the most recent estimate that we have for GDP, going back to Q4 of last year, where we ended the year, we're at 2.3% already, and we still have another quarter to go. And I think that's also going to increase, add to this GDP just by being positive. That's all it takes to add to it. And we're going to be up above that 2.3% uh, for a change in real GDP. So that number has to change for us. Unemployment rate right now is rocking. I think I have it here. Here you go. 3.7% is the last number that we got. You can see it was updated on December the 8th. And so they saw, and this is something I don't think is going to change very much, 3.8%. Back in September, that's what we're looking at is what this one's from is from September. That one, I think, could either adjust that down maybe to 3.7. Maybe they just keep it at 3.8. I think either way, it's not going to be a big deal unless we watch it go up to something like 3.9 or 4%. I think 4% would really start to tip things for the end of 2023. So that would be the Fed telling us something that we really didn't expect. So going on with 2023's number, PCE inflation, 3.3%. Back in September, that's what they saw. When we look at this, we are already... 
for October's numbers updated on November the 30th, which by the way, December 22nd is when we get that next number, 3%. So we're already down below where the Fed saw it. We'd actually have to move back up in order to get there over the next two months reports that we get. By the end of January, we're going to have those numbers to see just how close they were with those expectations. So we are already on an, infl an inflation basis down below where they thought we would be. And on unemployment, we're not quite up to where they thought we would be yet. So we want to watch for that. Now, mind you, back over to the summary, which I have right here. 3.7% for core PCE inflation. And right here, I have that number for you on St. Louis Fred popping up here. Uh, click to get that way. There we go. 3.5% is actually where we're at right now. So again, down below where the Fed saw that at back in September for ending or for ending what we would have before the end of 2023. And so it's going to be really interesting. I'll get to the Fed funds rate in just a moment, uh, but, but it's going to be really interesting to watch what they do with these 2024 numbers. We want to see this move up in order to see upward pressure on the markets. We want to see change in real GDP for 2024 go up and then unemployment rate. We want to actually see this one come down a little bit to talk more about that soft landing type of scenario that would encourage the markets that it's okay to go higher. So that could be very bullish for us. Should we see those numbers? Downward changes in real in, in real GDP or staying the same, I think could be downward pressure either way. A lot more if that gets revised and downward when we look at that. Unemployment rate, if that gets revised upward, we could be in more trouble. That could mean that the Fed is being a little bit more hawkish about this and they're going to do whatever it takes in order to move up the unemployment rate to slow down the economy from where they're at. So just keep in mind how this kind of stuff can be interpreted. PCE inflation, it'd be Absolutely excellent if they revise that down for 2024 on a regular basis and on a core basis for PCE when you look at both of those numbers. Now, one of the biggest things I said I'll get to federal funds rate, end of 2024, that whole higher for longer thing. Now, first of all, this for end of 2023 should get moved down because we're between 5.25 and 5%. So that should be actually a 5.3 or 5.4, whatever it is that they put it when it's between those two. 5.4, I guess, is what it would round to be because they take the average of those two numbers and then round to the nearest tenth when we look at this. So 5.4 is what that should change to because there shouldn't be any further rate hikes being that the last meeting is tomorrow and a, a, a rate hike is not expected. Should they raise rates tomorrow, by the way, that would be significant downward pressure, but it's almost not expected at all for that to happen. That would be a full on rug pull and, and uh, make people's head snap around and certainly cause the market to, to pull back pretty hard from where it's at right now. So like I said, that is not expected at all to happen and the market is not operating under those circumstances. So I think that we can go status quo on that one for the Fed pause. This is the more important number, this 5.1% that we have. This is end of 2024 when you look at this number. And this is the median estimate, by the way. We actually want to see that move down if we can. So staying the same not great for us because we want to chip away at that higher for longer narrative. Although I don't know that the Fed is going to give any ground. I actually can't see them giving any ground on that number. But I can tell you if that number moves down off of 5.1, down to 4.9, 4.6, wherever it might happen to, to, to fall in there, that would be upward pressure for the markets to watch that ease up a little bit, at least in the near term. So when we watch that happen, it can signal some other things about the economy, such as why are they cutting rates in the first place? Is it significant economic weakness? If that's how it's interpreted, that can be downward pressure on the markets. So we do have to pay attention to that as well. So if we actually look at the range for end of 2024, the range actually goes from 4.4 all the way up to 6.1. So we can also look at that to see if there's better consensus on to where they see themselves holding those rates higher for longer throughout 2024. We certainly don't want anything that's going to push the theme of the, the Fed being even more hawkish than they've already have been. We want to hear that dovish tone come in. And it would also be nice for 2025 to see this number start to come down a little bit as well. And so I don't honestly think that we're going to get much, if any, changes at all in 2026. I think it's too far out. And these speak more about what they want over the longer term. And you can see how they're pretty much matched up besides the federal funds rate to what they want for that longer run uh, for the for the federal funds rate, for PCE, for unemployment, and then also for the change in real GDP. So we want to watch for those things for this because that can most certainly affect the markets and what we have there. So for tomorrow, what do I expect coming out from Jerome Powell? I think that he's going to say that they're going to stand firm where they're at. They'll raise rates if they need to and that they plan on keeping rates higher for longer for as long as possible until they see significant changes happening. Inflation brought down back uh, near that 2% range. So I think as soon as we start to see things start to really go strongly under 3%, 
and cross, especially for uh, what we have for CPI and uh, PCE that moving down below 3%, I think is going to be more as seeing that we're on that trajectory still is going to be really bullish for the markets. And I'm still of the mind that we're going to put in a new higher high in December or in January, regardless of what the Fed comes out and says, unless they come out and surprise us by raising rates or they increase where they see the federal funds rate. Let's move over from there. I want to get to the overall markets. Here's the SPY. What another just great day. 464.10. We are less than 1% away from the all-time high for the S&P 500. So we want to keep that in mind as we watch the SPY. And when we go over to the Qs, it's much the same story that we have here. We are let me see, we're just over $4 away from that all-time high. So just barely over a percent away from that. And I think it's totally possible that we do get there. Maybe the market settles a little bit first. Maybe it's not a straight shot there, but I do think that December, January is our window for getting there. And I have mentioned IWM. IWM, the inflation report didn't do a great service today. I was hoping for some better numbers. We didn't get those better numbers, but we didn't get horrible numbers. It was still pretty much in line with consensus. It was just kind of like, yeah, that's the CPI that we expected. For me, I was a little bit under those numbers, but hey, we'll take what we get. We were at least close. And you can see, look at these wicks that we get every time that we get near that 188 level. This is one that I think that we're going to break through. I think it's going to take a little bit of time, but I think with the SPY, with the Qs, that IWM is also going to follow suit. So let me bring that down and I'll wrap this thing up for you. So I'm very bullish on the market still. I think the Fed meeting is going to be something that's going to be very turbulent for the markets, maybe leading up to the meeting when we get the, the numbers coming out, including the summary of economic projections, and then also Jerome Powell speaking at 2.30. It's just going to be a wild ride, and uh, it'd be nice to get some day trades in. I hope all you day traders out there, Stockmo, you're one of the people I'm talking to directly here. I hope that you have a great time and that you make bank off of that bread recipe of yours. So thank you guys for watching this video. Remember those links down in the description. Check out the Patreon. Join me in the community. See how we're playing this market. And then also down there is the link for Moomoo. Go ahead and snag that as well. Sign up, deposit your cash, and get your 5.1% and your free stocks. Thanks, guys, for watching. I am Dr. Stock, doctor of education. Remember, my friends, that learning is earning, and we'll see you in the next video.